To say that I am nervous and scared about the number of spindles and legs and round things on this table and chair set is a gross understatement. Yep. Finally. Anyway. Hey, uh, what's up peeps? I'm Jen and you've made it over to Copper Cactus DIY and in today's video I'm super stoked because I am taking part in another unique antique challenge. This one is hosted by Crystal over at the Crafty Creech DIYs and Furniture Flips and co-hosted by Twitch at Creep Designs by Twitch. Now, I feel like you probably already get the clue. I'm going to be refinishing this entire set. She's got some issues. Okay, um, the top is in super rough shape. I've got paint, <laughs> just splatters, scratches, failing finish, and all kinds of stuff all over this entire top. And unfortunately, that also goes for some of the chairs. There are paint splatters and scratches, and they are just in really super rough shape. Then you get to the white paint. Also, on the backs of the chairs, I've got lots of failing finish. There's paint splatters everywhere. Not to mention the chair that I'm sitting in right now. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be sitting in this right now. What I really want to do in this video is share my bright and bold, the inspired um, theme for the challenge this time. I want to share my bright and bold design. I'm going full on 80s revival with this piece and yeah, it's going to be super fun. So if these kinds of videos are your jam, then just stick around because uh, you know what we say around here. I'm getting started on this unique antique challenge piece. Right meow. I took it apart inside the house. and marked each leg position. Out in the workshop, I get started on the underside of the tabletop. It was like totally gnarly. There were a bunch of staples and some random stuff to remove. I'm not refinishing the bottom of this tabletop, but I wanted things as smooth as possible because, like, duh. On top, I used my Purdy Carbide Scraper, which made very quick work of everything. In fact, it pulled the finish off so easily, it surprised me that there was any finish left at all. I scraped in sections and vacuumed as I went, and I finished up off camera before moving on to assess the chairs.
Pretty much all I had to do was remove this one dot of paint. I was lucky enough that this is the only repair that I have to make, so I'm just gonna grab my uh, Gorilla Wood Glue and coat it. out. Okay, and then I think we'll try to clamp this, just at least a little pressure on it, just to make sure. Go below. Just the bar. Yeah, that tightened up quite nicely. Okay, I'll leave that to dry for probably about an hour, and then that should be the last of actual, um, that should be the last of actual fixing. Woohoo! So while the glue set, I got started cleaning. I use Palmolive dish soap, and in this case, I really needed it. I do cursory cleaning of this set all the time. We do use this regularly in our kitchen, so it gets wiped down and washed at least once a week. So to say I was surprised at the water from this set, yeah, like gag me with a spoon. I removed the old half gone feet as well as scrubbed every square inch of these nine pieces. By the time I got to the last chair, enough time had passed that the glue set, so I cleaned that one too. Yeah, it's been a hot minute since I've shared water on camera, but I thought you all might like to see this. <laughs> that is clean enough. Uh, for soap part. I am gonna go back over it with a wet rag and some warm water and get as much residue off as I can, but I guess I'm just gonna get scuff sanding after that, so yahoo! So I just uh, sanded this entire thing thinking that the camera was filming and it was not. So yep, <laughs> luckily that only took me about six minutes or so. I'm just doing this by hand because I'm basically just scuff sanding, but I guess if you want to see that, I'm going to go some high speed and uh, we'll do these. I used a 100 grit and quite a bit of elbow grease to hand sand these four chairs and in the middle of this, I suddenly had a flashback. To say that I am nervous and scared about the number of spindles and legs and round things on this table and chair set is a gross understatement. Nothing like 24 spindles to make a gal remember why she only does a project like this once in a while. It's usually a challenge to get around everything, but the finish on this was so bogus, I scuff sanded in record time. And I vacuumed and wiped down as I went. I did the same thing with all four legs and the other two chairs, and I finished everything else off camera.
For the top, I used a 150 grit and my orbital sander. I went super slow to remove as much staining and the last of the finish as possible. Side bonus, I got most scratches out too. This butcher block style top sands out like a dream and 150 is gonna be a good finished grit for what I plan to do with the wood. I hand sanded to 150 on all the chair seats as well, but I did that off camera. After removing all the dust and wiping down, I left everything to dry for the night. Okay, so I am going to just start with the can that I have on hand. This is Oasis Blue in satin finish. Uh, you probably can't see that, I'm sorry. My lighting in here is terrible. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is Rust-Oleum. It's the two times ultra cover and I find that it does actually do the job. You can kind of see up here, this is the same color that I used in the cornhole board. So I've got about like two thirds or so of a can left. I'm going to hopefully get at least a first coat on these legs. I doubt that I'm going to, I doubt this will stretch any further than the legs. So I'm going to get to this. Let's get started. I love this spray paint and it says you can add a second coat after just a few minutes, so I went in with two coats right away. To my surprise, I actually had some left in the can after two solid coats and hi, can we just talk for a second about this color? Uh, yeah, it makes me want to say things like bodacious, rad, totally tubular. What was particularly grody though, how long it took to tape off these chair seats. Seriously, like forever. Scared about the number of spindles. Okay, fine, that's an exaggeration, but it sure felt like it. Each one actually only took about 30 minutes, but I'm only sharing me taping off this one chair because I value all of you too much to subject you to something so lame. I am getting started painting my chairs. I'm so excited. I'm using my shop stool <laughs> with a trash bag over it as a stand. Uh, I want to get the underside first because then it's just done. I don't need to do two full coats on the underside. And then I'll flip them back over and do things from the top. I guess since everything's ready to go, let's go.
because I folded these little tabs down. So easy to take off. For the wood on this piece, I want to lighten this up considerably. I want all this yellow undertone goodbye, and I want something that's going to be super durable that's also going to seal it. So I considered a paint wash, which actually would be really simple and this wood would take nicely, but I have this on hand and it's a stain and seal. So this also has a sealer just built right into the stain, but this is the pickling white and I am so excited to get started giving this one a try. I was going to use a cool new product. I actually have this liquid latex. I wanted to kind of paint that on the bottom of the spindles here so that it would be protected, but I'm just going to use my tiny little one inch angled purdy instead. I'm going to have to come back in with blue anyway. I'm just going to keep a wet rag on hand because I want this to have more of like grain lines and with the natural grain of the wood showing through parts of the pickling without showing through all of the pickling. You'll see. It's basically applying like stain. It's pretty much the same uh, gist as that. So I'm going to get started with this and I'm going to keep you in real time so you can see just how I do come around all of these spindles. And then uh, I guess we're going to go to high speed action for everything else. So yep, let's do this. All right, I'll just start with what's in the top here. That should be plenty to get started. All right, let's, let's do a little demo. I mean, really just applying it like a stain. So I should probably get my squirt bottle.
That didn't take very long to apply, especially to the top. I finished up and I left this to fully cure for a couple of days. Okay, I've got my Craftsmart acrylic paint in white, and I've got my Hello Hobby chalk paint in ruby. Plus I've got these super cool Midnight Glow uh, paints. These are UV reactive. They glow in the dark under UV light. They're so cool. And I told you all I was doing a rad 80s makeover on this thing and I was not fooling. <laughs> I'm gonna use all of these and maybe some other colors too, we'll see, to create a really just fun, super cool top. And I'm gonna use my frog tape to tape off so I can avoid bleed under as much as possible but I'm gonna put you into some high speed because there's no real like measurements or anything like whatever here. So you can just kind of watch the fun unfold. Uh, yeah, let's do that now. Get you into some high speed action and get this thing totally bodacious. The taping, first coat, dry time, and second coat for all the colors took about an hour and 20 minutes total. And if I'm being honest, this whole project was me pretty much just winging it. I didn't know how it would really turn out, but I had this like adult skate, laser beam, synthesizer, solo max headroom vibe in mind, and I honestly think I nailed it. The colors are muted because I mixed in a bunch of the white acrylic, but that was exactly what I wanted because this will get even more fantabulous in the next part. Once I finished the tabletop, I got started on the chairs. I didn't want to use all four colors since the surface area is pretty small, so I picked two and I created a random crisscross pattern on the seat. I didn't measure or anything. Like I said, I'm winging it, and I kind of like that it isn't perfect. But what color do you think I did for the second stripe? Leave me a comment below before the end of the video and let me know what you think. After I finished the chairs off camera, I left things to dry for the night. Okay. 
In the morning, I applied two coats of Verathane's Triple Thick Poly, and that was in a satin finish. I did the chairs off camera, but they also got two coats of the same top coat. I only filmed the application of this first coat, but hello, look at the shine off this tabletop. Like, totally awesome. By the time I got to touch-ups, I still thought I'd be using that UV reactive paint, but the more I looked at the pieces just as they were, the more I thought less is more, at least for now. Maybe I'll get a wild hair someday, but not in this video. Instead, I used a few blue shades of craft acrylic, and I mixed a color that, while it's wet, I think is basically dead on accurate to the spray paint. Once it dries, it is a touch darker, but I'm not even mad at that. And that pretty much wraps it for this project. Thanks again to Crystal and Twitch for hosting and co-hosting. This was super rad, and I had the most bitchin' time ever making over this set into my 80s dream kitchen table and chairs. The playlist and everybody's channels are linked below. Hang tight for before and after shots. Thank you so much for being here and watching. Later, peeps. <laughs> without the table in there. That's how our house is gonna be pretty soon. Very big, very empty.